Hey everybody, I'm teacher Mark and on this channel I cover affordable creative software like Affinity Designer. Today I'm going to use Designer to trace image from a picture. So I will load a pixel based image and then use vector tools to create some kind of vector clip art out of it. Alright, let's get started. Here I am inside Designer. I already pasted my image. This is 100% raster based photo. Alright, I'm going to lock this layer because if I keep it like this, whatever I try to draw above it, I may move it by mistake. Just like that. I don't want to do that. So let's lock this layer. Alright, our reference layer is locked. And now I can simply select my first vector tool. In this case, Rectangle tool is like obvious choice. So let's go with rectangle tool. And the problem is I cannot see my original image now. So let's get rid of the fill color. And let's make this stroke color a little bit wider. And also I will give it some strange color as well. Maybe red or something like that. This is just temporary. All right. Next step will be to convert this rectangular shape to curves so we can apply some additional effects on it. So let's convert and now I'm going to work with corner tool but only on three corners. So I select three corners and I'm going to drag them in to make them rounded just like this. For the last remaining corner I will change the style of the tool and make it straight like this using the same corner tool. Perfect. That's really good start for this object for our little floppy disk. All right. What next? Let's draw additional rectangle. As you can see, the top edge is not straight. We got little holes here and there. So I'm going to draw shapes that I'm going to use to cut those holes. So let me select all three shapes now. Holding shift, select all three and subtract in geometry panel. This way I use shapes at the top to cut holes in my main shape. Cool. What next? Maybe this area here. Again, rectangular tool. In my case, I got very rectangular object floppy disk. So that's my main tool to trace this image. I don't need to do it by hand using pen tool. I can base on this shape tool. Again, same trick. Let's round some corners over here. And how about the top part? We can duplicate the main shape and then select the main shape, duplicate plus the top part and then intersect. This way we'll get rid of the unnecessary part. All right. So we got another shape ready. Few more to go and then we can start filling it with colors. This will be pretty easy. Again, just rectangle with two rounded corners, I think. So we use corner tool a lot for this little project. Select two corners with the node tool first and then switch to corner tool and drag them in like this. Cool. This is straightforward process here. Just rectangle on the left and right. If I could remember those little holes allow you to lock your <laughs> floppy so nobody can erase the content. All right little arrow at the top here. So let's use just a simple triangle and then duplicate this triangle like this. So we will get arrow. We can unite those two shapes, select both and click add. Nice. Should I align this arrow with this hole? Let's try it. Not really, I think. So let's maybe undo this process. 
let's make it a little bit larger. I move this arrow down here so I can make it in similar size to this hole. Cool, and move it back to the position. Nice, as you can see this auto guides, auto snapping thing is really helpful. You can turn it on by clicking on the magnet icon at the top, snapping area. All right, let's draw the shape for the silver part. Again, I start with rectangle. Now I will drag both out. I create duplicate and I will subtract. So I got only the common part. So this way I don't need to redraw it. I just can use geometry subtract on duplicates. Cool. I still need to round this one corner manually. So again, my corner tool. Perfect. And very straightforward hole here. I think we got all necessary shapes in already. So we can start filling this with colors. To, before I can do that, I'm going to move the original image out. So unlock and I will move it outside the artboard. So it's still around, I can still look at it, but it's not in the artboard area. Cool, select the main shape. You can hold the picker and get the color from the original picture on the left. Same with this shape. Hold the picker to get the original color and then you can get rid of this red outline color that we use temporary. All right, darker version of this blue will do, I think. We almost there, we almost trace our object, just a few more elements here and there. So let's fill this little arrow with color as well. I need to pick the silver color, I think, from this side. All right, not for the stroke, but for the fill over here. Cool. Let's use subtract to make a hole in this. Perfect. And this is the last shape. In this case, I maybe I would just keep it as the stroke for now. All right, so I successfully trace all important elements from the original pixel base image. I think only the line here is missing, so let's draw the line as well. We can use power duplicate, so drag down and then use the power duplicate common J shortcut to duplicate your last transformation. In my case, that was drag and copy. Cool, let's select them all to reposition for some reason. My lines are ending with round endings here. So let's change that to straight endings. That will be better. All right, and that's a perfect example of flat clip art. So if you're aiming to get a flat style, you already done. That's it. That flat style vector SVG clip art. If you want to make it a little bit more realistic, you can dive into layer effects and gradients. So let's try this as well. All right, so I click here below layer panel to open layer styles menu. And from here, you got several different styles that you can apply to give a shadows or glows, or 3D like look to different elements. So the easiest way to understand different styles is to simply try them out and play with sliders with options. So now I'm trying to give this element some kind of feel like it's kind of going inside this plastic floppy. This is a little bit lower than the rest. So I got a little bit of shadow and light on one side. So experiment with sliders as well to adjust the straight 
of it. I think I need to move the source of light here below. You can, as you can see, you can move this point all around here. And if you are happy, just close this window. Here's the next element. Now it's solid plain color. And for more realistic look, we can change this field to be a gradient. So you can click on the element and simply select a gradient instead of fill. So you can grab gradient tool on the left, hit this and drag it like that. Now we're going to modify this gradient by adding multiple colors. So I got two colors by default. Good, like, and now I can click on this white line to add additional colors in this gradient. And then I can modify them to blend some darker and lighter points together for more realistic metal-like look for this element. All right, better. Let's just change the position of the gradient like this. And it's definitely uh, better than the plain gray color. We can also add a little bit of shadow in the layer style menu. Not too much, just slightly like this. All right, overlay will do. We got a few more elements we can enhance with styles and shadows. So maybe those holes, we got inner shadow here to indicate the holes. Nice, nice, very good result for this element. Cool. What else can we do? How about this paper sticker? we can use a little bit of inner shadow to show that this is kind of inside some kind of hole in the plastic. And then we can also apply a little bit of outer glow to make this contrast even better between inner shadow and glow on the plastic. Nice. There's a little arrow left. So I'm going to select this con Command C to copy and then I will paste, but only the style. So paste style on this element from the hole. And now I can alter that. I can modify it. I just use the style from the hole as the starting points, but I can still reopen layer styles and make some changes to it. So as I mentioned already, feel free to experiment with different styles and sliders. That's the best way to learn what is what. Okay, we can change the source here. We can modify blending mode to overlay. So it's a little bit lighter, not too strong. Overlay is a very safe blending mode for lights and shadow. Okay, almost good. Let's try this mode. And I think I should point the source of light below in my case to indicate this is a little bit of hole. We can modify the color of it as well. All right. Not bad. There's only one element I don't really like. The one I did at the very beginning. So let's try to redo it. As you can see, when I apply some kind of 3D-like light on it, it's also make this shadow at the top. And that's just look wrong here. I don't need that. So I think I will have to create a new shape for it. So let's drag it out and try to make a new shape for it. So this is the element I'm working on. I will duplicate that, make the duplicate a bit smaller so I can subtract that, I can make a hole. All right, let's select both and use subtract operation. And I end up with this kind of line. I can select unnecessary nodes with no tool and simply hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of unnecessary nodes. All right, we clean up this element so we can move it back to the project. Now it's got the same color, but we are going to change that. Let's move it a little bit lighter. All right, now I can see it. So let's change this 
to be more realistic using the layer style panel again. Alright, select the element, go to styles using the FX button in the below your layer panel here. And now I'm going to apply gradient on it, not as a gradient tool, but as the layer above additional layer here. So I need to turn part of it white and part of it black like this and change the blending mode to overlay. So this black and white color will blend nicely with, to, with the original blue color. All right, take a look. Definitely better and as you can see now it's similar to the original one we got highlight below and darker line above so that's much better all right i think that's it we were able to trace our pixel base image into uh, some kind of vector clip art using affinity designer well done everybody hope you make it until this point, while following my tutorial, let's take a closer look before we finish the project. So let me just zoom in and you can clearly see those big ugly pixels on the left. This is quite low resolution image. So we get a nice sharp vector clip art out of it that now we can use across our documents without those big blurry pixels pixels all right guys thank you for today and if you are into vector arts or other affinity apps like photo and publisher please consider subscribing to my youtube channel and i will see you in my next tutorial bye